This is episode 11 with Aubrey Marcus. Hi, my name is Mike Dillard, and this is Self Made Man, the podcast for men who want to leave their mark on the world and create a legacy of honor, integrity, and achievement in every aspect of their lives. I'm glad you're here, and once again, it is time to forge your destiny. Welcome back to Self Made Man, ladies and gentlemen. And today we have an amazing opportunity to sit down and talk to Aubrey Marcus. And Aubrey, if you don't know him yet, is the founder of On It, one of the fastest growing health and fitness companies in the United States. And if you haven't heard of On It yet, well, you will. They are literally changing the game when it comes to supplementation and human optimization. And they are creating an incredible following in the process, which includes guys like Joe Rogan from the UFC. Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock from the big screen, Tim Ferriss, and legions of athletes and entrepreneurs who simply want to perform at their peak both mentally and physically. Now, fortunately, on its headquarters are located right down the street from me here in Austin, so I had the chance to spend some time with Aubrey to talk about the incredible rise of his company, which he started just four years ago, and that is what the focus of today's episode is all about, specifically scaling. How do you start a business out of your bedroom and successfully scale it from nothing to 1 million in sales and then from 1 million to 5 million and 5 million to 50 million without falling into the business crushing chasms that are strewn all along that road? So today's call is packed with wisdom on launching a business, building a global movement, and scaling your vision into one of the next great companies in the world. And I should also mention that On It was the very first sponsor of Self Made Man in this podcast. So I want to thank them for that and for their support of this project. And in fact, I've been using their products and have been a personal fan well before Self Made Man even started. Uh, specifically, I absolutely love Alpha Brain, which I use almost every single day when I'm working for improved focus. I use 180 all the time, uh, especially if it's been a long night the night before and I need some recovery. And unlike most of their nutrition supplements out there, I will say this, on its stuff works. You can literally feel the difference. I have to say, I also have a room filled with their clothing. I'm like a walking billboard for on its stuff, basically because I love the quality of their clothes and how they fit, which are perfect for me. And I have a room full of their kettlebells, which are absolutely amazing. If you haven't seen their primal kettlebells and how they've turned this piece of gym equipment into basically a piece of art. So if you haven't tried on it stuff for yourself, head over to onit.com slash selfmade. That's all one word, onit.com slash selfmade, and you'll save 10% on everything you order. Check it out. The stuff is amazing. So with that being said, please welcome to the podcast, Aubrey Marcus. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Mike Dillard here, and we are with the founder of On It in Austin, Texas, Aubrey Marcus. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, pleasure. this is going to be awesome. So, Aubrey, you've got a fantastic story as an entrepreneur with the growth and development of On It as a company, which is one of the hottest supplement and health and fitness businesses out there right now. And I'd love to take this opportunity to really dive into that story in much more detail specifically around how you started the company, but how in the world have you grown it to the point that you have in such a short period of time? Because the many entrepreneurs can make it on their own, start their own business and get up to that million dollar a year mark in revenue by themselves. They can hire an assistant or you know a couple of uh, talented people to outsource marketing to or, or other sides of their business growth and get to that $5 million a year mark. But you guys have jumped that giant canyon in the middle there, you know, after 5 million a year to that 50 million a year and up. And so I'd love to hear how you managed to do that. Yeah, well, well, I'd love to, I'd love to say that we're at that 50 million a year and up, but we're we're at least headed that way and yeah. so, you know, I appreciate the the confidence in what we're doing. But you know, honestly, from the start, we had a lot of things that went well together. And I think that was a combination of my experience. I ran a marketing company for 7 years, so I knew about branding, I knew about all of that side of the game pretty well. I knew about uh, e-commerce and everything necessary to run a business to that scale. 
And then, you know, my family history and some background and some contacts I had in the medical field with the psychiatrists and neurosurgeon, top athletes, I had a really good medical team to draw from to create a great product. Well, let's, let's start with the, the inspiration for it. What, yeah. what inspired you to start on it and how did you, we haven't had a chance to talk about it yet, but I, mm -hmm. uh, from what I've heard, you had a, a pretty big moment uh, as some soul searching and, uh, that really helped inspire this company and the principles and the values that you've built it by as far as the quality of your products and what you stand for. And well, yeah, I mean, that moment actually came right before launch, you know, but I kind of the idea, the idea happened out of just a desire to do something that, you know, I could really run by my own principles and have control over because as I was running this marketing company, I was making a ton of money for a lot of different other people, but I noticed a lot of the kind of political games that you experience and a lot of the, the issues that you'd read about in a book like Robert Greene's, you know, 48 Laws of Power, you know, these mm. type of dynamics that were really not only limiting the amount of uh, impact I could have, but also just the enjoyment of my life. I mean, it's just super stressful when you're having to deal with different people's egos rather than just trying to do the best work that you can and, and reap the benefits or take the, you know, failures, whatever they may be on your own merits, you know, when you're having to deal with and maneuver around people's, you know, personalities and egos, that's when it gets really hard. So really the first idea was just to create something that I love doing. I mean, I'm totally passionate about human optimization, supplementation, you know, from an early age, my stepmother was a, a you know, nutraceutical doctor and I'd get a stack of supplements on a paper towel before a basketball game, before a test, and I'd take it, and a lot of times it would go well, and sometimes I'd come back and be like, what the hell did you give me? That was terrible. It's like, oh, sorry, I was just experimenting. You know? uh, so that was something I was really passionate about, but you know, really this was just my way of doing something that I could have control over, and then it really developed into this vehicle that is a real part of my mission in life, you know, my top-down mission. This is obviously a very crowded industry. There's there's a ton of players in it. How did you come up with, or, or what did you come up with in order to differentiate yourself? Well, I, I realized that, you know, a lot of, like for something like brain health, for example, I had a cabinet full of maybe 12 different supplements that were all recommended to me from different doctors and different individuals. And simply out of sheer, you know, laziness to a certain degree and just lack of desire to put it all together, I wouldn't take all those supplements most days. Only when I was really felt like I needed it would I actually open up all the lids and take them all out and try to make sure I got the right ratios of everything. And I realized it was all way too complicated. There was too many good nutrients for a simple thing like, you know, optimizing your brain performance. So I realized that there could be an advantage in putting all those together in really innovative formulations. And I would experiment with that on my own, but again, you know, without taking the time to make my own vitamin packs and, you know, and that was just for brain health. If I was going to do brain health and immune health and mood and everything, I would end up taking 40 pills, mm -hmm. you know, and they would all be in the wrong ratio. So I knew that there was an advantage to putting that all together and really making an innovative single formulation. So take us back to the launch of the launch of the business in your first year. What did that look like? How many employees did you have? Do you have an office? <laughs> I had one employee and we were making basically hangover supplements was our first product. And it was kind of a bit of a misguided, you know, venture in that people who are doing bad things to their body don't really care about paying top dollar to recover. You know, I mean, it was just wasn't part of their mental framework. So we, you know, we struggled. We were promoting at different kind of party venues and raves and different places all over the country. And it was tough sledding really at that point, despite the fact that we had great formulations but i learned a lot about you know running that part of the industry about dealing with manufacturers about sourcing ingredients and um but yeah it was basically me and one other guy and uh that was how we started and then but i really marked the launch of on it as it is now with the launch of alpha brain okay and what was that what was that like that was a different story because I went to my friend at the time, Joe Rogan, and um, he's got a super popular podcast. I think right now he's up to like 12 million downloads a month and, mm. you know, really killing it, but had a, had a really popular podcast then as well. And I said, hey, Joe, like what supplement would you like to take more than anything else? It's like, ah, I'd like to take a nootropic cognitive enhancer. It's like, all right, I can make the best one you've ever had. 
And so he was like, all right, cool. And we had no business, you know, discussion at that point, nothing. And I got to work formulating. And I knew from the very first formula, it wasn't quite right, but it was special. Like it did some, it did some shit, <laughs> you know, and you could really tell it wasn't one of those 90% imagination, 10% mm -hmm. sensation formulas. This was like, oh, wow, something's going on. And so I sent some to him. He thought the same thing. And I knew that we had something. So from there, we widened out our sample size and really kind of tweaked the formula, kept working with the doctors and medical professionals to kind of tweak it and athletes and ranges. And then we set up to launch Alpha Brain and we still hadn't, you know, come together with a proper business agreement at that point. It was just kind of like we understood that it's, he would get some, you know, he'd get some equity, he'd get some royalty, he'd get, you know, we just kind of left it loose. And so I went on the podcast, launched the product, and we sold out of our first batch within 24 hours. And what, what was, if you don't mind me asking, what does that mean? It was 110,000 pills. Okay. So 30 pills a bottle, so like 3,000 bottles. Okay. And that was completely dwarfing all of the sales cumulatively that we'd done prior to that in the first year. Right. So like overnight, we had 3,000, like 2,500 orders to ship. Right. And we didn't even have automation on our, <laughs> on like our printing, on our shipping labels or anything. So that was like, you know, one of those moments like, oh, so you're all right. you bringing your friends and you're literally having to label the bottles yourself? Yep. So that was, that was the first step. But fortunately, I had worked with people who'd scaled up a lot of e-commerce. So pretty quickly we got in there and were able to, you know, automate the shipping labels, get some of that stuff done. But it was a mad, mad scramble because then, all right, so then we were out of stock immediately. But fortunately, I'd put in another PO and we had a very flexible manufacturer. So they, they got it going and then they had a two, you know, doubled the order, 200,000 pills. It was like a real drug dealer moment at that point. Like <laughs> you get one key, you sell it, you get two right, bricks, right. you sell those, you get, right. you get four bricks, you sell those, yep. you know. Yeah, so same, doubled it, 200,000 pills, boom, same thing, mm. out again in 24 hours. So we're in this kind of like rolling blackout period, but we needed those blackouts to catch up on these orders and, and get everything ready. But we had an office that was maybe 600 square feet, and then I just started adding friends as employees to the, you know, to the operation, people who I knew I could trust and mm. people who could handle themselves under pressure. Um, I didn't bring in any like outside help people who, you know, I was just interviewing for the job until probably my, you know, eighth or ninth, maybe even 10th employee, mm -hmm. you know, really it was just like, I needed people who I could trust. I needed, you know, soldiers who I could really feel comfortable with in the trenches. Where did you learn how to, how to build a business? Cause now you're talking about the, the beginning stages of scaling and dealing with hiring and firing and and is that something that you've learned through observation? Have you, did, have you had a mentor along the way that's helped you through that process? Not in that particular way. I've almost learned what to do by seeing what not to do. You know, I've been in a lot of situations where I've seen uh, management mismanage people. I've seen management fire people they shouldn't. I've seen them, all of the mistakes that I've seen in all of these different companies, from public companies to private companies, it's been across the board in every industry, pharmaceutical, oil and gas, you know, internet retail, everything. I've seen all of the mistakes that have been made. And, you know, I guess that's one of my inherent strengths is just a pretty good ability to read people and to inspire them to be at their best. You know, and I think, you know, a lot of times employees have a full range of where they could be either extremely valuable or, you know, pretty detrimental. And some are, some are have a more narrow range where they're either going to be work a little harder, work a little less, but some have immense talent, but could go either way, could be a real kind of cancer to the operation, or if they're at their best, they could be a, a huge ally. And I think one of the strengths I have is to get people to work at their best more often than not. What do you want on it to be like, what is your grand mission or vision statement? If you have one, if you will. I want on it to be a vehicle that takes care of the physical needs of people, you know, because without the physical needs being taken care of, without having enough energy, being out of pain, you know, being able to think clearly, helping your mood, helping your immune systems, you know, without all of that and, and helping fuel your body for, you know, exercise and everything, without all that, then it's really difficult to worry about helping out humanity or worry about the earth. You know, if you're in that constant fight or flight mode because your body doesn't feel right, then it's going to be really difficult to 
you know, make the, make this planet a better place really. And that's ultimately what my goal is to expand human consciousness and make sure that we have this incredible playground that we're playing in right now, the earth as long as possible in the, in the way, shape and form that is optimally suited. So you've got, you launched Alpha Brain, you know, smash hit success. That's really a product though. It's not a business yet. When do you, you know, when do you sit down and you're like, okay, like we've got an opportunity to do something really awesome. And I could imagine at that point, the possibilities in your head just open up to what this could be. Sure. And so when did you move into that next phase? Well, Alpha Brain was like that, you know, that paradigm example of like, okay, like I see what is possible. Like that concept that I had of putting all of the best ingredients together in one formula based around one topic worked. I proved the concept. And so really from there, it was just a matter of like, all right, what's the next most important thing? Okay, mood. You know, if you got good brain function, you need good mood function. So um, that's when we created new mood. Same idea, about nine, ten ingredients all working together to create anti-stress and mood boosting properties in a supplement. Next step, you know, needed athletic performance. And I found this nutritional mushroom, Cordyceps sinensis, built a formula around that. Shroom Tech Sport was born. And so I just kept on going by all of these major body systems and just replicated that initial formula, basically, not with the same ingredients, but the same idea. What's the best stuff? What has the best clinical research? How can we put, to, put this together in a kind of innovative way and make something that people can really feel? A game changer. And can you talk a little bit about the the principles and the, the values that you guys have here as a company? And the reason I ask is there's a fantastic video on your blog mm -hmm. that you talk about your philosophies in marketing and how those have changed. You know, basically going from the internet marketing type, sell at all costs, to letting the product stand on their own, doing the right thing, letting... Do you remember, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I mean, we have a couple of videos describing yeah. that for on it, you know, and I think really from the get go with on it, that's been the, that's been the idea because I learned and that's actually been, you know, part of a collaboration with Rogan. I mean, Rogan demands impeccability in all aspects and, and that's something that suits me perfectly well anyways. And I think, you know, at the start I had to shed a few bad habits from a variety of different other companies like trying to sell supplements with sexy girls or you know trying to do these things that had worked in other industries and and are just kind of habits that you don't really think about and then with joe it was a good chance to really like reflect and have a fresh start and just be like all right what do we want to do we want to create the most honest exchange with our customers possible everything from our return policy you know our return policy is unheard of in the industry basically People don't even have to return the products. They can just call us, text us, email us, and be like, hey, I didn't like it. didn't work for me. Cool. We'll give you your money back. Mm. And still, despite that, we have you know, less than a 2% uh, return rate where the industry average is 5% for anything that has money back. So you know, despite the most lenient policy out there, we're getting less returns than anybody. And it's just creating this kind of positive exchange where – people feel free to try stuff. We're not trying to play a game with them. We're not trying to screw them. We developed a subscription model. And usually in that subscription model, the idea is to kind of trick them into staying as long as possible. And it's this game that you're playing. For us, it's just a matter of we try to make it, you know, an assistance as convenient as possible, as easy to cancel, as easy to modify as humanly possible. There's never a discussion within us like, well, if we put it like this, they'll be less likely to cancel. We want to make it easy for them, you know, and in everything that we do, create like an even or positive exchange with our customers and just let them know that we, what we have, because we believe in what we have. And I think that's a major thing that a lot of people, entrepreneurs, they have the wrong mindset. They're like, how can we trick these people into buying our thing, you know, rather than, you know, how can we show them what we have? So, because they're naturally going to want it because it's good. It's of benefit. You know, so it's almost, there's almost this kind of predatory mindset that a lot of people have because they feel like they're taking more than they're giving. And that's not something that we feel at all. You know, we're, we have premium price products, but they're worth it. So there's not this predatory mindset of how do we get these people to do that? We just, here's what we got, mm -hmm. you know, how do we show them what we got? That's, that's the question that we ask. Like, how do we help them get it, you know, so that they understand what we're offering because what we're offering is awesome you know there's a huge 
there's a huge uh, shift that happens when you go from that $5 million a year mark, you know, onward and upward. It's a completely different kind of animal from a business perspective at that standpoint. Has there been a key moment or hire or piece of that process that has really allowed you guys to grow the way that you've grown? Was it bringing on the right, you know, CEO or the right tech team? What was, the, was there a key piece to that puzzle for you guys that have... Yeah, you know, I think there's there's two aspects to making good hires. And I think a lot of times people, one of them is obvious. And the obvious one is to hire people who are good at what you're not good at. That's obvious. And, you know, that makes a lot of sense to people. Oh, okay, if I'm good at this and this is what I like working on, I'll hire somebody who's good at that. That's important. But it's also important to hire people who are good at what you're good at, too. Because otherwise, you're going to be bogged down doing that. If you're you know, trying to run the business, you're going to have to do that all the time. And I think you know, one of my first hires was our chief marketing officer, Mike, who is very good at the same things that I'm very good at. So that I can really count on him to, to look at things with this, you know, similar eyes to what I would do. So that I can have the freedom to go out and do press and go out and have you know, a lot more flexibility without having to manage everything. So the combination of that mixed with, you know, I finally got to hire the guy that was really good at everything that I'm not good at. And that was actually pretty recently. Well, Um, how did, before we we dive into him, how did you meet Mike? I worked with Mike on previous projects, actually. Okay. So other companies in, uh, in the past. So if he's, um, if he's a successful marketer, knows how to generate sales and revenue, that's a in my mind, I have a story in my head that that's a hard person to find because they're typically doing that for themselves. Was that a challenge or is like... Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we got lucky when we first started working with him. He was working for this skate company called Active. And that company had a major downsize kind of event. So we were able to get him out of that situation as, as, the, as the walls were kind of crumbling down on that, mm. on that company at that point. And then... You know, as I kind of ventured off into my own thing, he went back and started working for another company in California, and I just kind of kept in touch with him. And I went out, I went out to see him, and I was like, "I'd love to have you on board here for on it." He was like, "Nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm happy here. I'm by the beach. This is, you know, I got my girlfriend, who's now his wife. He's like, we're all set." And then I just kind of kept in touch, and I was like, "Hey, man, how about now?" And then I finally got him out here, and he saw really what we had going on, mm. and uh, then it was an easy choice for him. So. That's the marketing side, and then you were about to to talk about the other side. Yeah, so the other side, we actually made a hire from a a gentleman who was running a Hilton hotel in Wisconsin, and that was, he was the, you know, the manager of that hotel, Mm. and someone who was really good at looking into all the little details that is not my, you know, natural strength. I like the kind of big picture, 30,000 foot Mm -hmm. view kind of stuff, and he's down to roll up his sleeves and get in the nitty gritty and, and make it happen. And that was, you know, that was a random kind of meeting. Basically I put out a call on my own Facebook page and said, you know, we're looking for people. And actually I was not even looking for that position, but he, you know, had the instinct to, to hit me up and said, look, I'll work this position you're, you're asking for. And I was like, well, you're way overqualified for this. You know, that was, it was going to be my EA at the time. Like you're way overqualified. It's like, I know, but you know, every, you know, I'm just willing, I just want to be a part of this and I'm willing to start wherever. So didn't hire him for that position, put him in kind of a little bit of an intermediary position. And he just, he killed it as I expected he would. So now he's the COO. And then the last piece was, you know, hiring the kind of legal general counsel and kind of defensive specialists. And that's all been pretty recent. So I feel like we're we're just now at a point where we've finally, after a couple of years, you know, July of 2011 was the launch, we finally got all of the major players together. Mm. But one of the people I had really early on was an all-star in the customer service team. And we've always managed customer service internally uh, from the get-go. We've never outsourced a single message. And having a badass customer service team that's super happy and and that's another great thing about this company is the people who work here are happy so when you have happy people and they're dealing with customers that is going to come across and they're going to treat people better and so you know that's been something that's really been helpful too very cool 
what inspired, you know, most of your products, all of the, the kettlebells, the art here in your office, uh, is very, has the whole primal theme, all of your t-shirts and your clothing. Mm -hmm. What inspired that? I know it seems, yeah. seems like a Rogan thing, but I don't know if it came from Joe or not. <laughs> well, it definitely, I mean, yeah. it definitely is, but that's the shared sentiment that we have. Mm -hmm. I think all too often people forget to celebrate the animal that we are. You know, they think of us as just people. Well, yeah, we're people. We're a mind. We're a consciousness. But we're also an animal. We're a, we're a primate. We're a primate that evolved in a way that allowed it to dominate through both physical and mental attributes the rest of the natural world. And to really celebrate that aspect of ourselves, you know, the the blood and muscle and bone aspect of ourselves. I mean, we still have fingernails. We still have teeth, you know, <laughs> but people oftentimes just kind of ignore that because you know, they think of us as really not these, not an animal, so to speak, but just a person. And I think really celebrating that, that to me is consciousness. Consciousness is the unification of what the animal is inside of us with the highest potential of our mind and spirit. Mm, very cool. And who has been doing the, this unique style of art that you have a lot on, on, on a lot of your t-shirts, which has been really awesome. And that's really another question for you actually is, you know, how do you, if there's been, if there's been any planning to it or, or, or thought process behind it, but you know, you guys are, are turning on it really into almost a, a lifestyle brand or statement, mm -hmm. you know, where you've got people wearing your shirts, putting stickers on their cars and their boats and, and doing it because they love the brand is, I assume that is just a result of your overall philosophy as a business, which is putting out the best products in the world and stuff that works that people love and, yeah and, but it's becoming more of an identifier almost like a, a statement they're trying to make to the world by associating themselves with, mm -hmm. with on it. Yeah. I mean, I think on it is, is becoming an animal of its own, you know, and when I go into these deep meditations, I'll get a chance to separate myself from on it and look at what on it is because it's far more than this company that I've started. It has a personality. It has a kind of a meaning and a, it's a movement, you know, more than anything, it's a movement more than a company. And that's, you know, it's, it's all, all things kind of put together. And I think a lot of times people try to separate, they feel guilty about the the products that they have. So they try to separate that and make there's the movement side and the product side. I think even Red Bull has this kind of weird dichotomy where it's Red Bull, the cool stuff that they're doing. And then Red Bull, the, the drink that's totally terrible for you, <laughs> you know, and it's like this dichotomy of two different things. Mm -hmm. Whereas for us, we're able to make that a unity and it's, we have awesome stuff that supports the awesome ideas that, we're putting out there. So there's no, you know, disconnect there. And I think that's what is really smoothing that path and making people pretty fired up. And it's consistent all the way through, you know, it's an apple that if you cut the skin of on it, what's behind the skin is more on it, you know, mm. and what's at the core is more on it. Mm. You know, they're never going to peel back a layer and be like, Oh, what is this nasty little thing that's in there? You know, it's like, and if, and if we ever discover that, we go to remedy it. It's not like we're perfect. You mm. know, we make mistakes all the time. We'll definitely fuck up again in the future. But, you know, the keeping to those core principles is key. So what are some of the biggest mistakes that you guys have made? Well, we had two security breaches early on mm. before we were able to get, you know, our kind of internet security up to par. But, you know, as we've seen in recent news, that can happen to anybody at this point. You mm. know, it's just a matter of how much priority these crazy hacking enterprises put on that but we actually discovered them internally before any customers knew or anything like that and i think how we responded really gained our customers trust because even though nothing had been done with the data and we didn't even know for sure whether it had been you know anything had been done with it the fact that somebody had access we felt compelled to let everybody know and so we just went out there and said hey guys we had this happen um, we have no reports of anything going on, but we just want to let you know. And people were kind of surprised, like, whoa, that was weird. I mean, you just did this of your own volition instead of just sweeping it under the rug. And I think we've made a lot of choices like that throughout the course of our company that, you know, and, and in my in my opinion, the only thing that we could do to really, you know, screw this thing up from here would be to, to lie or betray mm -hmm. our customers. You know, I mean, as long as, no matter whatever else happens, lawsuit, crazy political change, climate change, whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as we're honest and truthful and we've done the best by our customers, then they'll stick by us. 
you know, and because we'll just as we'll stick by and try to provide the best service for them. It's a it's a relationship that's that's real, you know, and, and as long as we don't betray that, it's going to be a fun ride. Any other any other things that you do differently looking back now? It's so it's so hard. I mean, I'm better today than I was yesterday. I'm better yesterday than I was the day before, you know, but how do you get from here to there without actually going through that process? Mm. You know, I mean, I would go back and I'd tell myself to read the books that I'm reading now <laughs> earlier, mm-hmm. you know, I'd tell myself to, to to have these different mindsets, but it's all a journey, you know, mm. and and I often I was actually pretty pretty upset when I was maybe 25 through 28 may up to even 30 before I started on. I was like, what the hell am I doing? I know I'm meant to do something more than what I have, but I really wasn't ready to run on it at Mm. those ages, you know? So I could go back and tell myself about this great idea for on it, but I wasn't ready then. So it wouldn't have done me any good. I'm ready now for whatever is happening now. And it's this kind of weird thing that I think can take off a lot of pressure from, from people who are like, they use this kind of, oh, I should have started sooner. Well, maybe you weren't ready to start sooner. Maybe mm-hmm. now is the time for you to start. You know, maybe you've accumulated enough knowledge. You've been tempered enough by the world, you know, battered around by fates and fortunes and learned the lessons of failures and successes. And now you're ready. Right. You know, that's um, something I learned a long time ago in my 20s, that if you want a particular result, you have to become a person that's capable of achieving that result. So... What have you done personally to to grow into, you know, the, the founder and the CEO that you are today? I've done a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it involves, you know, some of my, uh, you know, personal practices of going down to Peru, learning from the plants with some of the ayahuasqueros and maestros there who work with traditional plant medicines. Um, what, what has that done for you? Because I've have we've got a lot of friends. It's going. It's getting pretty big, and sure. entrepreneur circles probably mm-hmm. has a lot to do with you and, and your story around that. And if you wouldn't mind sharing, what have what have you taken from that? I mean, what haven't I taken from that? Mm-hmm. I mean, that that really sets up my a great deal of my philosophical, moral, and spiritual paradigm. It's, and it's all experiential. I think you know you can read about the nature of the spirit or the nature of what happens when you die or all of these kind of esoteric concepts and they don't really mean anything to you until you've experienced them yourself. So pretty young, I was, you know, 18 when I had my first experience with a shaman in the mountains of Mexico and I felt my body evaporate and I realized that there was something still there and that thing wasn't able to be killed. That thing was invincible. That thing was eternal. I felt it, you know, it wasn't like a question, you know, like, Maybe this is the case. This is what some religions say. And so I was like, oh, oh, (laughs) shit. Like, this is this is what's happening. This is real. And, you know, people can say, oh, it's all in your head, bro. Whatever. It's fine. Whatever you want to think. But I felt that. I experienced it. And it was an unshakable belief that, you know, set an initial foundation. Okay, there's something that is eternal that exists within the body, tethered to the body, but also outlasts the body. And you know, is, in, is permanent, whereas the body is impermanent. And so even like basic principles like that start to reshape your fears, you know, start to reshape your fears of death. And then of course, ayahuasca known as the vine of death will rub in your face any of these major fears that you have. I mean, the first time I did ayahuasca, it showed me there was bugs and serpents and snakes going into my skin and bursting out of my eyes. I was sliding down a vine of thorns naked. I don't even know why I was naked. I just thought that was rude. You know, like at least, (laughs) at least give me some pants if you're going to take the flesh off my body, you know, but nope, straight up, you know, straight up the grundle. Everything was getting ripped off on these vine of thorns and all of these things, eels coming in and eating my insides and all of this crazy stuff that, you know, by that point I had some experience in order to just the mantra of the person taking plant medicines is witness and allow. So I was witnessing and allowing this to happen and it didn't freak me out until ayahuasca was like, okay, you know, you're not scared by that. What about cancer? You got cancer. You got cancer right now and you're going to die. You know, it's late stage. They haven't found it, whatever. It was telling me all these different crazy things in my head. And I was like, oh no, no, not that. Anything but that. Ah. And I got scared and I resisted it and I fought it until finally I had to surrender to that as well. And in the surrendering is the freedom. Because that's how you get over your fears. You don't get over your fears by fighting them. You get over your fears by surrendering. You're just saying, oh, okay, okay. And so when I did that, 
you know, I felt myself drawn back into the earth and protected. And that was a major step in getting over fears of death, fears of suffering. And, you know, along this path, you have these different kind of marks. So one of the first big steps is getting out of fear. And if you're in fear, then it's really difficult to have free will. And to be a successful entrepreneur, you got to have all the free will you can muster. Because if you're being pushed and prodded by your own fears or your own greed, then it's going to be really difficult to be the most effective light tool that you can be to create, you know, what you want to bring into your life. If the mind is running you instead of you using your mind as a tool, that was a key moment. I, I did another, had another really key moment when I did this plant medicine called Wachuma, which is several thousand years old, comes from a cactus. It's actually on my shirt right mm. now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that really aligned me with really what my greater mission was. And that's, what they say in South America is para el bien de todos, for the good of all. And really understanding how that's the only game that I'm interested in playing. You know, I mean, I think a lot of people keep score with money. They keep score with how hot your girl is. They keep score with, you know, how strong they are in the gym. And those are, those are all cool. Those are fun games. But those are like, you know, sitting down playing Yahtzee with a friend. You know, it's not going to keep you entertained forever. Mm. It's really, there's, there's something limiting about that ultimately and and i'm not saying don't play those games it's fine to play those games but really the only game that i think is really worth playing is how do you benefit all of it you know the earth people animals the whole thing the universe like how do you use yourself as a tool to benefit everybody else mm. that's the that's the real game yeah and that's absolutely. the game i'm interested in playing yeah absolutely um that's very cool that's uh, that is on my to-do list and i've had at least a dozen friends who've gone down to Peru and done that. And all of them have come back with super positive experiences. Sure. So, and you have to be, you know, I just want to put in there, you know, you have to be cautious because not all centers are created equal and not just because someone is a shaman, they could even be a good shaman. It doesn't mean they're moral, mm. you know, like a shaman is someone who can affect, you know, who can work with these plants in a way that is a high level of mastery, but it doesn't mean that they're, that they're moral. Taking ayahuasca doesn't make you moral. You know, it can show you things. If you want to be moral, it can help you be more moral, but it doesn't inherently imply that. So, you know, people should definitely be careful. Make sure that they're called and make sure you do the research and find reputable centers. Talk to people who've been to places mm. and make sure you're doing well there because especially with demand increasing, there's going to be some charlatans. Yeah, absolutely. What is your morning routine like or what is your daily routine like? Yeah, this is, a, you know... There's some truth to the title of the book, The Corporate Athlete, <laughs> mm -hmm. meaning that this is a pretty, it's a pretty uh, stressful game at times. So what do you do on a daily basis to just be as effective as you can? And Yeah, you know, I think the most, I'm not one of those like really regimented guys and I, I envy the hell out of those guys. <laughs> you know, I talk to them all the time like, okay, from 10 to 11, that's when I do my emails and from you know, nine to nine thirty. When I wake up, that's my I meditation. Can't, I and can't do it either. That's just not. It's yeah. just not the way I work. The, the key thing for me is, if my body is healthy and uh, my body is like on point, then my mind is going to be on point. Mm -hmm. My mind's on point. Then my motivation's going to be on point, and then I'm really going to kick some ass. And so, really, just getting myself from the bottom up ready for that is the most important thing. So, making sure I'm getting my workouts in, doing. I was going to say, you know, if you could go into detail on how you keep your body in peak sure. condition. So it starts with, you know, nutrition. Nutrition is a foundation there. And for me, nutrition is really simple. You know, eat as many foods that are as close to natural foods as possible. Earth-grown nutrients. Yeah. You know, living natural foods. So there's nothing I really say don't eat. Maybe not nothing. I mean, as long as it came from a real natural source. Sugar is one that I think is uh, is a bit of an issue, even though it comes from cane, which is natural. Most of it, even if it's processed, you really should kind of mitigate that. But something like dairy, for example, you know, for me, it's not about cutting out all dairy. It's about what's the source of the dairy. Is it goat milk or is it cow milk? If it's cow milk, is it raw cow milk or is it pasteurized, homogenized cow milk? You know, like where does it come from? What are they eating? <laughs> what are they eating? Yeah, and exactly. What is the cow? Is the cow eating GMO Monsanto grains or are they eating grass? You know, mm -hmm. and so, and same with the meat. You know, obviously, 
it's still surpri- it's so shocking to me how many people are still afraid of fats despite these massive <laughs> research studies that have come out showing that you know saturated fat is not bad for the heart and is actually a necessary component for the production of hormones and everything so eat your egg yolks you know eat some butter you know i mean we should have known this a long time ago the french paradox diet was discovered in the 1980s where you know french people were less obese and had less cardiac disease than most other nations in the world and they're eating like four times the butter, 60% more cheese, and a lot more fat than people. But people were just explaining it away because they had this confirmation bias about fats. So eating a lot of fats, eating a lot of nutrients, a lot of greens, got to stay alkaline, you got to stay mineralized. That's another key thing. I mean, I could go on in the nutrition part forever, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting how Gary Vaynerchuk has a favorite favorite saying that marketers are in everything eventually. <laughs> yeah. And um, and you could really see how that happens in the food industry, in the health, the medical industry in the United States where one person finds or a company finds an incentive to, you know, bad mouth eggs or milk or butter or fat or whatever it may be. And then they build their entire business offering the alternative to that, whether it was true or not. Yeah. You know, that's interesting. So, you know, workout routine. Yeah. So that's all right. So take care of the nutrition. Okay. Then you layer on the supplementation. You know, I think supplementation can be, you know, really, I like to look at it as just extra fuel to propel good nutrition. Sometimes it's that you can put it in that, oh shit, I better take some supplements because I haven't been doing the nutrition part right. Mm. Um, but even if you are doing the nutrition part right, it can really fuel things. I mean, alpha brain is something I take four times a week. I take a lot of these other supplements, so that's good. But then, yeah, working out is another key. For me, I think it's really about listening to what my body wants, but making sure that I'm doing at some point some good anaerobic exercise because the anaerobic exercise is what's going to increase that growth hormone cascade. Like 500% more growth hormone is released in anaerobic training than aerobic training. So anaerobic training is really any time that your muscles are working so hard that oxygen can no longer supply them uh, with the fuel that they need. So sprints heavy lifting, you know, that feeling where your muscles are just burned to the, burned to a crisp, you know, at that, at that point, that's really key to implement. So to me, that's one of the most important things that, and then getting some good sweats in, whether that's through, you know, doing some kind of sauna work or a hot bath or whatever, as long as I'm sweating and getting some anaerobic training in, my body feels pretty good. So if you didn't, wouldn't mind, talk a little bit about, you know, walking down this path right now what you guys are doing with honored academy and Mm -hmm. your new partner joe and and your plans for that so you know we as humans as the animal and we're designed to work and you know i think we've developed certain implements that you know everybody just uses to work the body and that's a barbell and a dumbbell i mean and some and then some crazy machines but the people you know real trainers realize that the crazy machines generally aren't the best you know, like a Cybex machine, because you're in these fixed kind of pla- you're in these fixed lines of motion that may or may not work with your body's lines at all. At least with free weights like barbells or dumbbells, you get a little bit more flexibility to take a bath, a path that your body wants to take. But even with those, you know, they're very fixed implements. And what we've decided is, you know, those are great. You know, we're not going to say don't do those. Better than um, nothing. Better than nothing. And and they have their place. You know, how are you going to do? really heavy deadlifts without a bar. I mean, it's just the most effective way to do a deadlift is with a bar like that. But, you know, there's a lot of other things that you can add that really work well with the body and really work well with the functionality of a human, like kettlebells and clubs and maces and ropes and sandbags and these things that when put all together creates this comprehensive package that is ideal for training any athletes, like MMA athletes or just training everyday individuals who want to optimize what their body can do. You know, I mean, it's very difficult to work the shoulder girdle and work kind of rotational strength with uh, just a regular dumbbell barbell routine. I mean, those are very linear motions. But when you start adding a mace and doing these 360 swings or a club pullover, you start to work these muscles that you work when you need them anyways, when you're in a sport or when you're in a scrap or when you're in, you know, whatever you want to do. It starts to really work with the body in a much better way. So what are your plans for, you know, what's the vision behind Honored Academy? What do you guys want to do with that? What makes it unique or awesome? I think really Honored Academy is the place where the best modalities lead and we take all the ego out of it. You know, I think there's been a 
one of the big issues with the fitness world is that there's so much ego in that business that everybody is talking crap about everybody else. And, you know, when really most people have a good idea, you know, and so what on an Academy is about is taking the best ideas from each school of thinking and then adding them in to this kind of comprehensive choose your own adventure package where you ha- you can do anything because we're just testing what is the best and offering what is the best. So what's the best aspect of CrossFit? All right, cool. We're going to add that into our program. What's the best aspect of, you know, strict RKC style, IKFF style, kettlebell sports style training? Okay, cool. We'll add that in. You know, what about club training? What about mace training? What about rope training? What about, you know, sports specific training like Joe DeFranco is a master at? You know, cool. We're going to offer all that as long as it's really sound and we can prove that it works. We're going to add that in. So then, you know, on an academy becomes this place where people can experience exactly what they need depending on their goals. Mm, okay. And what are y'all's plans for, for that side of the business? Is it to grow this into a giant fitness, you know, nationwide fitness business or? Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to think small. <laughs> you know, I think you know, we're providing a lot of that unconventional equipment mm-hmm. and providing ways for people to use that equipment at home because not everybody wants to go to the gym. But if you do want to go to the gym, I think we're training up trainers. We have certification courses. We have over 400 level one certified people. We have another 30 level two in kettlebell and we'll start to develop master trainers. And the more master trainers we get, the more gyms that they can run. And, you know, so we're naturally going to kind of expand, but we're going to keep quality high. You know, I don't think we're ever going to go with a a model of, you know, pay us a certain amount of money and come out and we'll hang with you for four hours and then you can run our gym. You know, like that's not exactly the model that we're looking for because Mm -hmm. we want to make sure that, you know, wherever you go into an on an academy, you're going to get really high quality training, just like if you came to the headquarters here in Austin. Mm, Very cool. So... You know, what's the next, what's the next five years for, for on it look like next five years for on it? You know, I mean, I think it's really the sky's the limit. I, I really see us now We're we're extremely well loved by the people who know us, but there's a whole lot of people who've never even heard of us, you know, and I think we're going to start bridging that gap of where on it becomes more of a household name. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it expands mind. our demographic. How, how are you going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the that's a $100 million question, mm. right? I think really with Alpha Brain, that's going to be our, our biggest bridge in the mm. mainstream consciousness because I'm not aware of a single other nutritional supplement that has natural earth-grown nutrients as its foundation and what's inside of it combined with top-level clinical research. And that was something we haven't talked about yet, but we have two human clinical trials on alpha brain on a healthy population group, which is by far the hardest population group to test. Almost nobody tests uh, anything on a healthy population group because it's hard to show statistical significance. Mm. And we not only showed significance, we showed it in verbal memory, processing speed, uh, peak alpha, which is, you know, uh, associated with flow state, a variety of different, you know, whole cognitive attributes that we showed statistical significance in in uh, in a really smart young population so we have unequivocally the best natural supplement for the brain you know based on not only on our feedback and anecdotally but now we have the science to back that up and that's something that everybody can really benefit from Mm. and i think that is that's something that people you know, over 40 should start taking religiously, even for brain health, let alone brain function. And then for younger people, this is about when you need to be on and you need to be at your best, thinking the clearest, being the sharpest, being able to respond, whether it's a date or a business meeting or a presentation or your writing or your podcasting, I don't give a shit, you know, whatever you need to be at your peak performance, you should have a bottle of alpha brain ready for that moment. And we have other supplements that are good. But for me, I think alpha brain is that is that real bridge where it's like, this is something that everybody can and should be aware of and mm. just have in there, have in there, kind of have on their shelf, you know, like break glass in case of, <laughs> in case of cognitive emergency. No, I, my bottle sits right next to my computer. And so <laughs> exactly. every day I don't forget to take it. And, and one of my favorite products that you guys have is your 180. Yeah. And if you could real quick, I'm going to share my experience with that. But what was the the purpose behind developing 180 well that was pretty simple that was really like 
if you're if you're really not feeling that good, you know, maybe you're hungover, maybe you just didn't sleep well, maybe you got jet lag. Mm. You know, I would tell people to take two Alpha Brain, two Shroom Tech, and one New Mood, and then also a pack of Himalayan salt. Mm. So we had the minerals, we had the neurotransmitter boost from the Alpha Brain and the New Mood, and we had some of the adaptogens and B12 and things from the Shroom Tech Sport, and that was just kind of like a little cocktail. And I was constantly telling people like, hey, take this little cocktail and you'll feel mm. better. And people were like, man, I feel better. <laughs> you know, and uh, until finally I was like, you know what, screw it. We're going to put this together in one packet mm. so that you don't have to think about it. You can just bring these packets with you and anytime you need to turn your situation around, you got you covered. Yeah, no, it's great. It's it's become my morning coffee replacement. Right. Like that's my that's my version of caffeine and if, I, don't, I don't believe no it has caffeine. any caffeine Yeah, no all. stimulants. Yeah. That's one of the cool things. Like even if you're up working late and you don't mm. want to go to the coffee because you know it's going to totally screw up your sleep patterns you know you can go to the alpha brain and it might give you some crazy dreams but it's not a stimulant it's so not going to prevent you from falling asleep that's how you're going to know when you try alpha brain that it actually is really really working <laughs> is when you go to bed that night <laughs> right because you are going to have some crazy not not bad dreams but you're going to have very your brain's going to be very active in dream totally state. totally yeah. yeah it's not going to affect the quality of your dream you know i mean i think a lot of people you know, are worried about that. I mean, it's just, it's just going to let you get out what's in your head. So if you got some stuff, bad stuff, you need to get out, you know, <laughs> better to let it out than to keep it in. It's a cool experience. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, that's awesome. So yeah, my favorite products with you guys, Alpha Brain, the 180. Uh, I love the, in fact, I, before I came in your office today, I was next door buying more warrior bars, which are, uh, an awesome kind of snack in the middle of the day. If you're, yeah. uh, if you're feeling low, I've got your, I've got new mood as well, and then the the whole food drink. I can't think of the name of it right now. EGN, uh, the, uh, the Earth Grown Nutrients. Yes, yeah, yeah the green powder. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's fantastic too. That's really really good, and it's just getting an update too that um, to the formula. The old formula was incredible, but the new formula is is really next level. I'm What's going to be different stoked. about it? We just were able to, you know, we have about 24 ingredients in there mm. in the original formula. The new one, we just started swap making, you know, kind of targeted swaps of really from good ingredients to amazing ingredients, um, like adding things like Moringa, mm. um, Shizandra, you know, a few different other herbs and nutrients that are really kind of top level. Very cool. Very cool. Aubrey, one, you know, one last question before we wrap up here today. What, what's the biggest piece of advice that you could give to the guys listening to the show who are wanting to really take their life to the next level in every, in every category, business, family, friendships, love, investing, fitness, health? All right. So my best advice is you got to tether yourself to two points. The first point is your win. Like what is, what is your win? Like what is, and what I mean by that is like, what is the ideal situation for you where you are acting at your best potential to achieve the best result and really make sure that you're, you know, you're careful not to choose something that's ultimately going to be unsatisfying. Like if your win is, oh, my win's having a Porsche. Well, guess what? When you have the Porsche, you're not going to be that stoked. So try to like, try to like outthink yourself a little bit there, you know, like dig a little deeper, Mm -hmm. you know, find your win, whatever that may be. And it could be anything. It could be like, man, you know, I'd really like to be a marine biologist and just live on a boat and make 10 grand a year. I don't care. I just want to study fucking plankton. I love plankton. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care. If that's your win, make sure you're, that's your win. So mm-hmm. tether yourself to that and then actively envision that. Like see yourself in that position and make that one anchor. And then the other anchor, you got to anchor yourself to the present moment too and make sure that you're aware and that you're aware of the opportunities that are that are presenting themselves to you. And then from there, it's just a puzzle. And humans are great at puzzles. Like as long as you anchor yourself to your win, where you want to go, anchor yourself to the present moment, then you've set this rope. It's like this line, this plumb line, Mm. and you're an ant. And you just got to follow it no matter how it sways in the breeze, no matter where it goes. You just got to stay on the line and you'll get there. And, And it's just a puzzle from there. And it's just one puzzle after another. How do I get from here to there? How do I get from here to there? And solving puzzles is fun. And they never stop. They never stop. Yeah. Yeah. And and then, you know, your win may change. You may anchor, you may set different anchor points. That's cool too. Mm. But as long as you have that, have those two things set, the present moment and where you want to go and actively envision that, then it's just a matter of, you know, playing the checkers game. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, brother. I appreciate the time today. This was was amazing. 
And uh, guys, make sure you go check out Onnit stuff. You can go to onnit.com forward slash self made for uh, a 10% discount off of anything in their store. And uh, Aubrey, thanks for your support of the show and, and taking the time to, to join the audience today and, and share your lessons learned, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. And check out my blog, um, AubreyMarcus.com. I'm putting out a bunch of content there as well. And if you're interested in any of the plant medicine centers that I've personally been to, mm. and again, this is not a recommendation for anybody. I'm just telling you where I went and where I trust and where I would send my own family. Go to AubreyMarcus.com slash FAQ and you'll find FAQ. that out. FAQ. Awesome. Thank you, man. Appreciate cool. it. Yeah. Take care. Thanks, Mike.